Deep down, do you feel you give too much? People just take, take, take and don't put in even half of what you put into your relationship. Now, deep down, you want to belong and not feel alone. So you try to be pleasant and nice and that's okay. But too much of it is a form of emotional manipulation and it can attract people that will ignore us, hold us at arm's length, not really engage in a deep, intimate relationship, both romantically and platonically. People pleasing can become compulsive and this is when it's dangerous. And unless we break the cycle, we will always feel like we give too much. So let's talk about the signs of people pleasing, how it attracts avoidant people and how to overcome it. I'm Dani DeSilvez, helping you to get unstuck and start healing the trauma response. People pleasing isn't bad, it's actually quite normal. Seeking validation from others is ingrained in human nature. Maybe we say yes to watching a film we don't really want to watch to keep our spouse happy after they've had a long, stressful day at work. That is compromise and relationship maintenance. However, when all we've known is people pleasing, we don't know when to pull away from dead end relationships. If you were trying to build a relationship with someone and they were rude, they were hurting you and disrespecting you, you should be able to recognize, oh, that's not good. This relationship clearly isn't growing. So I'm going to pull away, distance myself, bring up the issue to fix it, or just decide to completely move on. But instead, people pleasing as a trauma response is the mentality to continue to please a person that hurt us and trying even harder to make them happy, thinking we are not good enough, we aren't being kind enough or accommodating enough to get this person to like us. As a child, we may have sadly experienced abusive parents and caregivers or we were emotionally neglected. Now, children automatically take blame for an adult's problem, such as mom and dad are getting a divorce, it must be my fault because I didn't sit with them in the evenings and watch TV together. They internalize it. So the child then takes on that mental load of, if I do things to please mom and dad, this resolves my anxiety of change and I can see them smile. Now, overall, the child thinks I'm not good enough, I have to try harder to please, which creates the attraction for avoidant people. We have conditioned our brain to assume that intimacy with another person means giving them whatever they want to please them, which causes us to lose ourselves in the process. And this actually stops deep intimacy and deep connection from forming. So this may explain why many of your relationships with others always feel a little bit empty, like no one cares for you the way that you care for them, and people don't truly see you and understand you. Examples of people pleasing. Now, the easiest to identify example is when you've just started dating someone new. Things are going great. You want this relationship to be a long-term thing, but then they say or they do something which questions how compatible you are for each other. They could say, yeah, I don't really buy flowers. It's a waste of money because they eventually die, don't they? So you end up pretending that you don't actually like flowers, even though deep down you're like, damn, I really wish you bought me flowers. An extreme example could be your new date has a narcissistic father and he is rude to you and your partner, and you've figured out that your partner isn't aware of this behavior and how his father treats him, so you've questioned it, but it brought up some uncomfortable feelings and nothing was resolved. So you shut it down and you continue to visit the parent's home, meaning you continue to be abused and spoken in a way that is rude just to keep the peace. Why do we do this, I hear you ask? Well, it's because accepting the difference between us and another person is uncomfortable, because it could mean that the relationship isn't as great as we hoped. Therefore, we are doomed for incompatibility, which means heartbreak, and that does hurt. We've never been told that it's okay to say no and to have different opinions. So instead, we people please because that's all we've ever known, and we abandon ourselves because our low self-esteem tells us we don't deserve better. Let me just interrupt for just a second. Does this video resonate with you? If it does, give me a thumbs up. Leave your favorite emoji down in the comments section below because I know sometimes we don't wanna be vulnerable, especially on YouTube, telling people this is my personal intimate feeling. So instead, let me know that you resonate and leave your favorite emoji. Attraction to the avoidant. So now you know the inside psychology, this should help you to understand that one person in the relationship is willing to to shut down feelings, their interests and intimacy, 
or to keep the avoidant person happy because the anxious person doesn't know how to soothe themselves. Therefore, they search externally outside of themselves to soothe that anxiety, worry, shame, guilt, all of those lovely feelings. And if you resonate with the anxious person in that friendship or romantic relationship, you will find that if you look back throughout all of your life, you are attracted to the avoidant people. Well, because it's familiar, it feels safe. Your parents and caregivers were avoidance, and that's all you have ever known. Meaning, even on a first date, you will subconsciously notice an avoidant trait and you think, yeah, I can work with that, this is great. But if you were on a date with a secure person, you wouldn't want to have a second date because it would feel uncomfortable because dating this person means you have to spend time in your own head and body because that secure person can regulate their own happiness. And of course, the avoidant person is attracted to you because they can come and go as they please and they know you will never pull them up for their disconnection. And instead, you fight harder for their approval. And if you want to learn some more about avoidant behavior, check out this video right here. The avoidant does want to have a relationship, but they find it very uncomfortable. They go through this push and this pull cycle where they get a lot of love and a lot of attention and they're like, yeah, this is too much and they pull away. So the people pleaser thrives on this dynamic. One moment they're receiving the attention that they longed for, then the avoidant partner pulls away. The anxious person doesn't know how to deal with it. So instead starts people pleasing, trying to get them back. The avoidant continues to pull away, the people pleasing increases, you guessed it. But eventually that cycle does end and the avoidant person does come back for more attention. What happens now? Well, this rewards the people pleaser. It actually says to them, look, watching live football with him makes him love you more. Or only ordering from takeaways that your best friend likes means that they want to hang out with you more. Overall, the avoidant lives in a bubble. Now they don't sense anything is wrong because that people pleaser keeps on pleasing. But the relationship feels like a sham to the anxious person. Like there's always something missing. There's no deep connection, but admitting that there is incompatibility here, that hurts too much. And the sunk cost fallacy applies here too. Meaning we don't wanna give up on something because of how many years we've spent in that relationship, how much money, how much time, how much energy we have put into making that something. But here's the thing, if you are the people pleaser, eventually, after a long time, you do realize how intimately lacking your relationships and your friendships are. But usually at that point, when you do have that courage to speak up and say, this isn't enough for me anymore. You actually realize you emotionally checked out months ago because of the burnout that you felt after all of the energy that you put into that relationship, which is why it may seem surprising and a complete slap in the face for the avoidant one moment to be like, yeah, they were happy. They were doing all these amazing things for me. And the next minute they door slammed me and I never heard from them again. So how to stop people pleasing. Firstly, understand when you abandon yourself. In those moments where you feel disconnection from your friend or your partner, you may feel this need to immediately lie about something, cover up the truth or bend something slightly, or even just go along with plans that don't really interest you. Now, knowledge of when this happens is key, but it's a big but. It's gonna take a couple of tries until you are consciously aware of when that is happening in the moment. Journaling, meditation, and therapy can all be powerful tools for deepening your understanding of yourself. The next step is to improve the relationship with yourself. Understand that people pleasing happens usually when we don't know who we are. We don't like sitting with ourselves. We feel anxious and we don't know how to comfort ourselves. So we immediately think, aha, making someone else smile is going to make me feel better. So work on being your best friend, date yourself, explore things that you want to do, even if that means you have to go to those things alone. That's okay. There's been many times in the past where I have gone to restaurants on my own or gone to musical events on my own because my partner had different tastes than me. Rather than me being a people pleaser and shutting down what I enjoyed, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go and have chimichangas on my own and that's okay. So give yourself the energy that you give to other people and learning to be comfortable with just yourself and able to sit with your feelings it's actually healthy feel scary to begin with i have been that i know 
but it does get easy. Remember, you won't lose connection with someone by staying true to yourself. People actually respect us more when we are being ourselves. Because if someone did say, well, you know what, we cannot be friends because you like pineapple on pizza and I hate it, well, that probably wasn't a good friendship if someone is so opposed to making sure you only like what they like. Remember, when we engage in people-pleasing, we create this facade that prevents others from actually really knowing us. And as a result, all of our relationships remain superficial, they lack depth and emotional intimacy. Number three, be mindful of the bitterness. Yeah, remember, saying no is not selfish. It's an act of self-care and self-respect. But sometimes, we can hold on to a lot of resentment when we feel that we've given so much of ourselves and we've received nothing in return. We may even look back at our past actions and cringe at how over the top we were with our people pleasing and we're like, oh, that's icky. And when we have those feelings, we are quick to become passive aggressive and assume that everyone is out to get us. For example, a recently divorced man can say, I gave my wife everything I had for 10 years and all Sheila did was take, take, take. And now we are divorced and I am very sure that all women are hard work. They're out of control and gold diggers. I will not even try dating again. Really, he's just projecting his hurt onto a generalization. And Enjoy the growth. You're like, well, hold up, growth. It's uncomfortable. Mm -mm, not for me, but it, it does get better, I promise. Embracing our authentic self, it's essential for personal growth and self discovery. At the beginning, we don't really know who we are. We're like, do I like ice cream? Do I like watching psychological films? Who am I? I don't know. But spending time with yourself, you can begin to discover, wow, I'm really an awesome person. By giving into people pleasing, we actually deny ourselves the opportunity to explore our true passions, our values and aspirations, which actually, sadly, hinders our journey towards fulfillment and self-actualization. Now, vulnerability, admitting to yourself, who am I? I don't know who I am. This can be intimidating because if we've only based our interests and our values on everyone around us, yeah, it's uncomfortable, but having that moment of being vulnerable, it's the gateway to deeper intimacy and understanding yourself and others. And admitting your mistakes, sharing your insecurities and standing up for your beliefs is tough for the first couple of times. It makes your legs tremble when you say to someone, no, I am not ordering pineapple on that pizza. But amazing growth happens just outside of our comfort zones. And you know this, and I know you know that. So thank you for sticking around to the end of the video. You are amazing. And I cannot wait to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. See you soon.